Hey guys, it's your boy 180 here. I'm going to be driving as uh, Mark Webber for the 2013 Monaco Grand Prix. Um, it's going to be 25% race, which means it will be a 20 lap race, safety car on, and yeah. And here is a track guide by Anthony Davidson for the Monaco Grand Prix. Okay, here we go, a lap of Monaco, the busiest circuit you'll ever drive in the whole calendar of Formula 1. Out of the last corner, open up the straight as much as you can, DRS and Kerr's available on the run down towards Turn 1, bumpy, under braking and in the shadows of the buildings, watch the exit curb as well and the barrier as you run up the hill now towards Turn 3, clip the left and then the right, and now down through the gears, hugging the inside there. Don't let the car understeer too much because on the right hander, you want to open it up. On the run down the hill now, very easy to lock the inside right as it hangs in the air around turn five. Down towards the hairpin, first gear. Hug the inside corner as much as you can and then straighten up before turning right and using that curb that's available on the right hand side there. Now the next right hander that comes up before the tunnel, let your eyes readjust, hold it flat out through the tunnel now, clipping the apex and letting the car run out wide. The burst of light comes at you as you break at the 100 meter ball, flick the car left and then right through the chicane and now you run the car to the right hand side as close to the barriers as you can before flicking the car left and using all of the available circuit at the swim pool section, left and then right again, breaking a straight line, get as close to the barrier on the right, and use that curve on the exit on the left as well. Now into the infamous Rascas corner, the double apex right-hander. Very important to keep the car nice and straight on the exit there. Before this final corner, don't use too much of the exit curve, and that's a very busy lap of Monaco. So there we go, that was Monaco. And yeah, here we go, guys. So here we go, sunny Monaco here today, driving as Mark Webber, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to be starting on the prime tyre, the soft tyre, and then I'm going to be changing on to the option super soft tyre. So yeah, I'm going to be using the high top speed and the low top speed, so yeah. Let's do this! So there we go, Grosjean in first, Vettel in second, and Mark in tenth, as we, uh, as we are about to start the Monaco Grand Prix, the 20 lap race of this track. Here we go, green, 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 at the Monaco Grand Prix, getting a good start off the line, got Button and Rosberg battling it out into turn one. A little bit of contact from them too. As we come in out of turn one, getting past Raikkonen, using a bit of curse to try and get a big boost to try and get past R Rosberg. And as we do, coming into the next corner, bouncing off the curb, uh, bouncing off the barriers as we get round past um, Button there. Coming into the into the hairpin here, getting contact and oh. Got contact there from Schumacher. Button there. Oh, contact, contact there. Just, just saw in the background there Schumacher going to the wall and also Button goes straight to the back of me there. Hopefully, hopefully I won't get a puncher for that because that'll be the last thing I want in my mind, a puncher. As we run a little bit into the back of um, Maldonado there. Coming into the hairpin. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of contact with the wall there. 
But no, no serious damage. Coming out of the final corner. Onto the pitch straight to start lap two. Out of 20. Sierra. Monaco. Quite simply, the best track in the world, to be honest, in my opinion. Just, you know, because because it's the most famous. It's got unforgiving, unforgiving um, corners and barriers. And um, yeah, it's it, it and it's a and it's a track that provides loads of action, you know, as as we saw in 2011 and I think a little bit in 2012, where Grosjean went into the, into the Schumacher and that and then that started a big train of um, contact and crashes from um, the rain uh, from Pedro and um, from Grosjean and um, Schumacher. Even though it was Grosjean that actually started the course of the mayhem. And then in 2000, and then, in 2000, and, then and then like I was saying in 2011, had mayhem. Had mayhem right from the start, literally because of Lewis Hamilton, you know, crashing into people, you know, crashing into the guy that I'm trying to get past, which is Maldonado. And then also. His um, rival, which is his enemy, which is um, Felipe Massa, is again a good run out of turn one, but not close enough to get him past Maldonado as we head into turn three here of Monaco. And yeah, we're starting to get a train. Look at this. A bit of a train starting to form as we're coming into the next corner. Oh, it's getting ca Oh, it's getting a bit. It's getting a bit congested now. Coming into the next corner. A bit of contact. I think Maldonado, yeah, he's lost his front wing. As we're heading into the hairpin here, and I think that's because of a back marker. It's Glock. It's Timo Glock. I think who started all that because he was going really slow out of um, out of Casino there. So here we go, coming out onto the main straight. I'm getting good run on my teammate down into the chicane. Oh, a little bit. Oh, it's going to be very tight. And yes, I managed to get past, and I'm up into fourth place. Next up, Schumacher. Heading into the, uh, heading out of the swimming pool chicane here of Monaco. And yeah. And as I was saying, Monaco 2011 having many, many, many mayhems. And yeah, Hamilton crashing into his enemy, Ros um, Massa there. I think, to be honest, that was going to be... You know, I, I don't think it's going to be my favourite. I think my, my most favourite Monaco Grand Prix has to be 2012. Just, you know, it was going to be 2011, but because of Hamilton and, all that, and because I'm a fan of him, no, I don't think 2011 is the year that I would be saying is the greatest year for Monaco. No, I think 2012 is the best year because I think it had every, it had chaos in a good way right from the start to the finish. You know, as I was saying, Grosjean crashing at the start, and then at the end there with Mark Webber, just, just you, just um, delivering a five, six, almost six car um, train on the last like sort of eight laps of the Grand Prix, and it was so, so amazing. It was so, so exciting to watch because I didn't know who was, um, I didn't know who was going to strike first in terms of overtaking, and yeah, they were all so close. They were. They were like almost close to touching into the rear of each other at one point of the Grand Prix. And yeah, it, was re it really was a sort of, S a sort of reminiscence of um, 1992 where Sen and Mansell were going absolutely knock, um, they were going absolutely hammer and tong to close, um, to um, get past or defend each other on the final couple of laps and it really was incredible and there was no touches there was no contact between the two of them and that's why I loved about that um, tw the 2012 um, little battle there because it had a reminiscence of 1992 which is I think one of the most famous Monaco Grand Prix of all time so yeah, that 2012, my favourite Monaco Grand Prix for that reason.
as we're heading our way into the tunnel, getting a good sort of line out the corner there, but just running a tad wide there, as I'm trying to really sort of clo trying to close him down using the slipstream, but coming down into the hairpin, going to try and get past, but nope, not close enough, going to have to drop back and um, tuck behind Schumacher there. Coming out to back, into the swimming pool section. Into Raskas. And then into the final corner, running a tab wide there. That might hurt me. Down the straight, here we go, this is it. I'm getting closer and closer, I'm going down the inside, but no, not close enough. Gonna have to drop back and try again. So yeah, my tyres are starting to go now. They're starting to appear a bit orange now. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try and sort of, I'm gonna have to try and see if I can, I can um, save my tyres while I'm trying to get past Schumacher. I'm gonna try and see if I can get past him at, um, coming into the chicane after the tunnel, because that is um, a corner where most drivers overtake here uh, um, cleanly. Here we go, getting a good run using my curves down the inside, and I take third place. Thank you very much. And now I'm up to third. Next drive up is Hamilton, the winner from 2008. Oh, a little mistake there. Schumacher are hot on my heels as we head into the Raskas. We're a little deep there. Oh, I'm gonna have to use my flashback again. There we go. Coming into Raskas, I'm going to take it nice, nice and slow there. Out of the final corner, onto the pitch straight, getting a good exit there, beautiful exit as we get a time of 1 minute 17.8 there. Four tenths down on my fastest lap, but still really, really quick on these tyres. Heading into turn three, oh, a little mistake there. Heading into Casino. Now down into Mirabeau, the corner where Lewis Hamilton made a mistake in 2009, which cost him a chance to get in pole position in 2009. Into the hairpin, oh, running a little wide there. Penalty for me. Gonna use my flashback. Got two left now, so I gotta be a little careful, especially in Monaco here. Don't want to be getting a penalty at Monaco because, you know, because if you do get a penalty, especially when you've got like probably 10 cars that are like 10 seconds behind you, you you're gonna find it really hard to get past. And get back in, and to get yourself back into contention in terms of like Monza, where you can overtake like pretty much easily. All, all Spa, to be honest. See ya. I don't. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and um, save my f um, my fuel for a bit here. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go charging after Hamilton because I know I've got I've got um, I've got um, option tires and and um, they've got option. I know I've got option. I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna save my fuel because I'm not gonna go on a hard charge after them because I know for the next pit stop I will have super soft tires and I'll be going probably like a second quicker than they will. So. I, I'm in a good position at the moment, so I'm not going to go charging after them, but I'm going to save my fuel for the time being. So yeah, what's been going on in my life to them this week? Not really much, not much. Um, by the way, oh, the Xbox um, One came out, the, the new Xbox con um, con um, console came out. 
And um, what do I think of it? I think it. I think it looks really good. I think it looks really elegant. You know, I think it. You know, I think it doesn't look really sort of stylish because the. I think the square. Just, the, I think the shape just makes it look. You know, sort of unappealing. To, uh, uh, to be honest, a little bit. It looks kind of like the Wii U. To be honest, but in black. Yeah. Just you know. I would have loved it if they did sort of like a like a cre a creative um, shape, you know, like sort of like a cylinder, maybe even I don't know a cone, you know, those sort of things. You know, it'd be nice to have sort of a weird creative shape for the new Xbox. But you know, I like it. You know, I think it's and I don't know why they called it the Xbox One. You know, I really do think the 720 is a appropriate name because. You know, this model, the Xbox 360, you know, you know, it'd be, it, I, I would have loved it if they called it the 720 because, it, because you know, calling it the Xbox One, it just seems a bit, you know, pointless, you know, it seems like why, you know, why are you calling it? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't quite make sense to make, putting the name on there, you know, but the Xbox is fine, but the one just, you know, seems odd, to be honest. In my opinion, but anyway, I'm looking. I'm looking. And but I'm. I'm looking forward to the game. I'm looking forward to the console. I'm. I've. Got, you know. I really, really hope it's a really big leap and jump to from the Xbox 360 because you know because you know um, it's 2013. It's 2013. Um, the graphics are the graphics and um, on the TV and all that are gonna are getting more are more realistic, and um, Xbox are gonna and Xbox are gonna have huge huge um, huge huge um, pressure to perform and get in that great um, game to sell profit and yeah and yeah I think I think. I really do hope the Xbox is pretty, is better, mu like much, massively better than the 360. Because if it isn't, then I, I will just probably, I will just sell my Xbox. That I will just sell my Xbox One, trade it in for, you know, something different, rather than that, you know, and, and then in, or instead even trade it in for the PS4 if it's if the PS4 is good. You know, but yeah, I I think I might get the I think I might get the um, Xbox first because like it's because Xbox pretty much is like pretty much the biggest gaming company of all time to be honest. Even though you know not not being biased to PlayStation or that, I really do think that Xbox is a bit better. So, yeah, even though I'm a tiny bit of an Xbox fan. So yeah, I I really hope the Xbox is is gonna. I really hope the Xbox is gonna be like a mad, a major gaming machine of the future for our lives. And say for the PS4, I really hope it's good. I really hope it it it, it, it says what it says on the t what people are think it's gonna be. So yeah. Um, and also, last night there was a new game, new trailer for the new, for the Xbox One, and that was Forza Motorsport 5. So yeah, Forza Motorsport 5, the brand new game for the Xbox One. What do I think of it? I think it's a good game. I, I, I'm, I, I'm really excited for this game. I don't know what I, I, I really don't know what they're going to do next, you know, after Horizon or after 4. You know, I really do think that they're just gonna upgrade the cars, you know, make the graphics a bit more better, add more tracks and all that. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited for the game, and I can't really wait to see what exp uh, what Forza are gonna do this time of the game in terms of the game features and all that. What new, if the you know noise, um, the the game game sort of the in car game thing is gonna be improved and all that. Um, but what I'm massively excited for this and for Forza to come out. I think it's going to come at the same time as as the Xbox will, so I'll be getting that definitely, um, as well as the Xbox as well, the Xbox One as well. And yeah, and yeah, it's going to be. Um, 
it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a great Christmas this year. To be honest, I, I really do think it's gonna be one great Christmas because of the two consoles. So yeah, must be excited for those two. Can't wait. But, so yeah, moving bomb back onto the race. Just made just made a little mistake there. As we just made a little mistake. Oh, off into the, oh, off into the barrier there. That might cost me a little bit of time down into the out of the swim pool section. I'm gonna pit this lap because I, I if I just go on one more lap, my, I'm I'm just gonna lose like probably like a sec two seconds per lap to the others behind me there. So I'm gonna come into the pits, get these tyres changed. Come on, go go go! Come on! Oh, it's gonna be so close down into the, down into the exit of the pits. Come on! No, no, second, third, come on, will it be a fourth? Yes, it will, fourth, fifth, coming down to the pits. No, I just come out right behind my teammate, I come in fifth, but here comes Alonso, side by side, it's going to be sixth place for me. No, we, it'll be fifth place, so I dropped two places in that race. So I'm going to try my absolute hardest to close down and get past these remaining four cars here. So coming down to the main straight here, I'm trying ever so hard to close down on Sebastian Vettel. So yeah, I'm on, I'm on the option tyres and, they, and they're on the prime tyres, so I should be faster than them. So that should give me a great advantage in the, in the last seven laps of the Grand Prix. Coming out of Raskas. Into Anthony Nino Nose. Onto the final corner, onto the pitch straight. 1.19.6 here at Monaco. Coming out of Casino there, coming into Mirabeau. Getting right up close to my teammate Vettel. Coming into the tunnel, I'm going to use my curse to try and get past the, the three times world champion here. But no, not close enough, not close enough. See, he's getting the draft off um, Rosberg there, I think. Or, or I think Tumark, actually. Or a little bit of contact with Vettel there, just going really slow into the swim pool section. Coming in, coming out of the swim pool section, hitting the bollard there. Hitting into the final corner. Just trying ever so hard, just being patient as I can to try and get past the double world, the three time world champion get a good run oh, kind of cross doing the cut back on him and I take fourth place in the Red Bull next up Michael Schumacher the seven times world champion here in Monaco five laps to go in this Grand Prix can I do it? can I get into the podium? In the last five laps, comment below. Pause it now and comment below on where do you think I should, where do you think I will finish, or even where, or even do you think I will get on the podium? Comment below because this should be good. Oh, running a little wide, cutting the corner there. Got to be a little careful. I've used all my flashbacks up, so that's not good. That's going to be hurtful in my race. So here we go, down into the final corner, getting a good run out of the corner, get using DRS. 
down the straight. This is it. Can I do this? Here we go. Oh, not close enough. Backing out this. Going to do the cut back again. Going to use my curves. I'm using all my curves. Down the straight. Round the outside. Yes, I do. And I take third place here from the Monaco Grand Prix. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful move on Schumacher. And we are now into the podium here today at Monaco. Ladies and gentlemen. Alf into the tunnel here. Pulling really, oh, just getting massively away from Schumacher now. Just pulling like four car lengths on him now. As we try and get right up to, uh, as we are going to try and see if we can close up to the top two who are starting to get close now so that should help me a little to be honest oh shit oh shoot sorry pardon my language coming into the first corner here I'm in our casino. Just concentrating so hard. That's the reason why I'm not talking much on these final two, on these next two laps because I'm going to try. Because I'm concentrating so hard on closing up to the leading two. Getting right up close to Hamilton there. Breaking hard. Oh, little mistake there. Hitting the wall there. But no damage to my front wing there. That's good news. Yeah, I'm absolutely pushing as hard as I can. Maximum attack for these last couple of laps of the Monaco Grand Prix. Using my DRS here. This is it. Down the straight. 1 minute 16.2. Fastest lap. Come on. Can I get second place here at Monaco? It would be fantastic for Mark Webber, especially coming out of 10th place, that'd be great. Getting a good exit out of that corner. Getting max, getting amazing acceleration out of the corner there. Using all my curves. This is it. Down the straight. Can I do this? Going to be breaking as hard as I can. Late as I can. Yes, I do. I managed to get to tenth, second place. Great driving by Mark Webber. Can I do this? Can I take the victory here in Monaco? It would be fantastic for the Aussie here in Monaco. Can he get his... For a third win in Monaco, in Monte Carlo. Oh, hitting the wall there. Hitting the wall as you go onto the straight here. Using my slipstream, getting right up close. Oh, little mistake. Oh, little mistake that could have cost me a chance of getting into the lead there. Maximum attack for me. No mistakes. Come on, stay on the road. Getting right up close to Grosjean here. This is it. This could be my chance. This could be the race winning lead, uh, overtake here. So here we go. This is it. Using his slipstream down the straight. Using all of my curves. This is it. Dive up the inside. Oh, this is going to be so close. And yes, I do. I'm into the lead. Mark Webber leads the Monaco Grand Prix here in Monte Carlo today. Beautiful pass. Absolutely beautiful. 
Bet Grosjean there. Grosjean could have DRS. Look at that. Here we go. On to the final lap. Going to try and use my curse to fend him off. This is it. Down the straight. Into turn number one. And yeah, good news is he didn't get past me there, so. So that's good news from my from Weber's point of view. Coming into Mirabeau. Gonna try and do probably I'm gonna see I'm gonna might do the same thing as Weber did last year, and that's just backing the field up a little. But not too much so that they'll have a chance of overtaking, but just enough so that they'll they won't so that they so that I'll um, so that, that they won't get past. So there we go. Coming into the back now. Into the final remaining corners. Oh, little mistake there. But no, we're alright there. Into the final couple of corners there. I've got I've got a cater ham ahead of me here, but that probably might not um, slow me up too much as we head into the final corner here of Monaco. Onto the pitch straight. Mark Webber wins the Monaco Grand Prix here in Monte Carlo. Great victory for the, the Aussie here today. Fastest lap, 1 minute 16.219 seconds here. Again, 9 positions during the race. Great victory, amazing race. So here are the results. Mark Webber wins the Grand Prix. Roman Grosjean on second. Lewis Hamilton third. Michael Schumacher fourth. My teammate Sebastian Vettel fifth. Fernando Alonso sixth. Kimi Raikkonen seventh. Massa eighth. Jensen Button ninth. Sergio Perez tenth. Pastor Maldonado eleventh. And Paul Di Resta twelfth. What a race! An amazing, amazing race. Just on the last last couple of laps, made the moose count and stick, and that gave me the win here today. Great victory! Probably one of my most, uh, may probably the most in, um, intense Grand Prix commentaries that I've done. Um, in my in Jabba's history on YouTube, really, really intense. That was just to close them down and get past them. Amazing. So yeah, there we go. Thank you very much for tuning. See you guys later. Bye bye YouTube.